Are you originally from Winona? If not, where are you from? I was born uh, in a little town on the southern edge of the Iron Range it called Aiken, Minnesota. And at the time, the, so I grew up there in the 60s and the 70s, and at that time, Aiken County, being part of the range or on the edge of the range, we, we were like one of the top 10 countries, counties in the country in terms of the number of people on public assistance. So um, my dad suffered from seasonal unemployment, and, um, so, and we were poor. But aside from that, I would say that I, I feel like now in hindsight, I feel like I had a quintessential rural yeah. Minnesota upbringing, right? Yeah. I, we lived on a small dairy farm. I showed livestock in 4-H. Uh, my best girlfriend and I rode our bikes all over the place, <laughs> sold Girl Scout cookies from the bikes, um, went camping with our Girl Scout camping kits. Um, and we spent a lot of time at her grandparents' resort on Sunfish Lake swimming. So I feel like I had not maybe not a lot of money, but I had a great childhood. It is my husband who grew up here in Winona. And so when I first came and saw it, oh my goodness, I just <laughs> fell. I mean, I fell in love with how beautiful it is here. And so we moved here in 97 and we moved to Rolling Stone. Um, because even back then, it was hard to find uh, houses to buy mm -hmm. in the city. Uh, that hasn't, hasn't changed. And then we moved into town in 2009. Awesome. And then what are your favorite hobbies? Yeah, so I love hiking and I love uh, road biking. And we have the most amazing places to hike here in Southeast Minnesota. This fall, we keep having weather with great days, and so Great River Bluff State Park and Perot State Park, and um, we went up Sugarloaf one weekend, we went out to Whitewater State Park. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. I love to bike. Um, I have had some physical issues over the last year, and you know, I haven't given up on my ability to bicycle, but even if you just start here in Winona, in 10 minutes, you can be out in East Burns Valley Road, like in the middle of a pastoral setting, yeah. going through a valley. So those are probably my two favorite things. Awesome. And then what are some of your favorites in life? Examples, music, movies, books? Um, so the two things are probably art and psychology. <laughs> um, I, okay, I grew up in a little town and I didn't, I didn't have a lot of exposure to, like, for example, I never rode a city bus or went to a fast food restaurant or um, parked a car in a parking ramp until I was in college um, in Des Moines. So I had to take an art appreciation college in, a class in college and it, it was fascinating. It was the first exposure that I really had to visual art. Mm -hmm. So even after I had moved to the Twin Cities and was in the middle of my career at General Mills, I applied and got into the BFA program at the University of Minnesota, and I got a BFA in printmaking. So I actually have a printing press and a studio in the basement, but I haven't been able to do any printmaking for about 10 years. And the second thing that I am just fascinated with is um, how our brains work and how um, it forms us as people and how our experiences change our brain chemistry mm -hmm. and kind of a lot of the new uh, stuff that they've learned really in the last decades about how people's brains are integrated with their bodies. Yeah. Particularly in the last couple years, which have been so stressful because mm -hmm. of the pandemic and because of just the societal upheaval that's been going on, I have taken up meditation um, and a few other practices to kind of uh, be more calm and to find serenity. And those practices now are backed up by research that show the physical and mental benefits to uh, some of that stuff. So uh, that to me, that all is really a fascinating topic. Awesome. So who inspires you the most and why? I, you know, I have to pick a bunch of people here in, in Winona. Um, I feel like we are in the midst of a bunch of heroes and that especially in the last two years, we have seen them step up and do so much for us as a community. I, I think about Ben Klinger, he's the emergency coordinator, management coordinator for the, for the county, but also then 
the partnerships that were formed with the Winona Fire Department, the Winona Police Department, all of the folks that work in our public health, Melanie Tadji, um, the public health nurses, uh, like Betsy Zeller, who <laughs> gave me my COVID shots. Um, those people uh, working so hard to keep us all safe and to educate us, even in the face of a lot of adversity. So I'm really grateful for them. Um, and I'll say too that with the last elections that I felt like uh, at the county, uh, Sandra Suchua is our auditor treasurer. So she runs the elections really for the whole county, but for the city of Winona, um, Monica Mohan, they did so much to give us expanded early voting, to run a staff that followed everything by the letter so that we could have so much confidence yeah. in the election process. So for all the people that have really had to go out of their way during the pandemic to, to do such a fine job, I'm super grateful for that. Awesome. If you could have dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would it be and why? Um, Nelson Mandela. Um, I think that for someone to live with and suffer under apartheid, yeah. to spend all those years in prison, and then when he became a president in South Africa, he didn't seek retribution, he didn't seek vengeance. What he sought was unity, and he had uh, an emphasis on personal forgiveness um, and reconciliation. And for me to understand someone who can personally suffer that kind of injustice, but then face the perpetrators of that injustice and, and rise above it mm -hmm. to do what is the best for everyone in the long run, is that, that is just an amazing, amazing thing for me. So I, I can't imagine how you couldn't learn something from him. Yeah. Okay. So what made you want to work in your current position? Well, if we think of my current position as being a county commissioner, <laughs> um, then I, it's because I care. Now, um, being an elected official, working in the community is really different than what I did for my job for 30 years. I wrote software and I was a technical expert um, for IT projects. And in software, it either works or it doesn't, and it's really not someone's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> but it is not like that in public life. Everyone has an opinion, and they don't often correspond to, mm -hmm. to you know, what you think is the, is the thing that might have been successful. But I will say that the drive to use data, to take whatever research, whatever information that you have, and use that to make the best possible decision rather than to base your decisions on an ideology mm -hmm. is that part of my job, that technical part of my job that I've really tried to bring to being a county commissioner. Now, I will say that aside from that, I also believe that government is here to help people. And that, well, okay, in my job at General Mills, I traveled to India, I went to several countries in South America places where you can't drink the tap water, um, mm -hmm. and places where infrastructure like the sewage, um, electricity, uh, telephone, the streets, that stuff barely works or it is completely non-existent, and where people live on the sidewalks and in the ditches alongside of the roads. And we have so much more than that here in the U.S. because I think that collectively we can help everyone to be lifted up in our society. So that is my vision, that government is here to help people. Um, and if I think about programs that we do, some of them that I've learned about in the time that I spent with the county, it's not just that they're the right thing to do, it's not just that they help people, it's that they, they also um, have a, a positive return, you know, by giving somebody help here to, to get off the, their addiction, you save so much later in terms of services that they might require and not just pain that they and their families might experience. Yeah. So my goal is really that I want to be wise, but also compassionate in the use of our resources. So what are some of the day-to-day -day tasks in your position? 
Oh, mostly I go to meetings and read things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the board meets twice a month, but then we all have committee assignments. And so I go to the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and Health and Human Services Advisory Committee. I'm on the SEMCAC board, um, on the Workforce Development Board, um, the Emergency Coordinating Council. I represent us at the Minnesota Intercounty Association, our EDA, and I'm sure I'm missing some. <laughs> um, but being prepared, understanding, you know, what are the issues that are going to come before us frequently when they're not an area where I have expertise. It's pretty time consuming, but I think extremely important to make informed decisions. And um, the county government in Minnesota is the first tier administrative government for many of the programs at the state of Minnesota, especially those for health and human services. And they are so complicated, so that there is always something there to catch up on. Um, and the second part of what I do is I talk to people a lot. Um, sometimes I try to convince them of things and sometimes I really just want to hear what they think about things to better understand their point of view. Recently, and I want to take an opportunity to plug it, um, I've been trying to get people to participate in the Compassionate COVID campaign. Um, for folks who have gotten a vaccine or for who take other precautions to protect themselves and the rest of us and would like to tell us a story about why uh, with this vision of community and harmony and really protecting one another and unity, then um, they should get a hold of me because <laughs> we want to hear their voice. Perfect. So what are some of your favorite parts of your position? A lot of the work that I've had to do in the last year to 18 months has, has been fraught with difficulty. Um, and I some days think that there isn't much that you could decide without somebody being mad at you about it. Um, however, the things that bring me the most joy are making or like helping other people, right? So recently, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was reading on someone else's Facebook feed, these two women were having a conversation about how grateful they were because of the vaccine clinics, because they're safe, they're easy to get to, they're free, and that people that I know will come from Minneapolis because it's a heck of a lot mm -hmm. easier to go to the East End Rec and get their yeah. vaccine. Um, so those kind of services, that that's the kind of stuff that I want to be able to do. What are your goals for the future? Well, my goals for the county are that we will be getting about $10 million in uh, American Recovery Plan funds. And we're going to spend about two and a half million of that further expanding broadband. Um, we spent about a million of our CARES Act money. But when we get done with that, there will only be about 900 households in the county that don't have internet access. So that's a giant improvement that I'm very pleased to be able to be part of. Um, we are also going to be setting several million aside for special projects. and. Um, are hoping that institutes or groups or nonprofits um, are going to apply for uh, projects for that money in the first quarter of next year. And some of them are things that we would otherwise not be able to do. It's a lot of money that I, and I'm very excited. So um, expanding low income housing, that is one of them that I really think is going to come forward and that I hope the board will be able to um, be able to fund. So what are you most thankful for in life? Well, recently I've talked a lot about the stuff that I'm thankful for. Um, the amazing, caring, and talented people that live here, the way that they have really stepped up, and the ways that they help us all. But I think about Engage Winona, or the Advocacy Center, or Volunteer Services, or the Catholic Worker House. Um, the primary prevention prevention project, those folks mostly volunteer to do that stuff, mm -hmm. and they go above and beyond um, to to really help all the rest of us. And so, I'm really grateful to live in Winona. It's not just beautiful, but like the people here are really beautiful. <laughs>